be here today. Maybe one day, but not this soon. Yeah, I, uh, so you and I talked about this a little bit yesterday. The number one thing that the Bears got wrong was not the macro. In fact, the Bears, who were talking about persistently high inflation and higher for longer interest rate, they got all of that right. The thing that, that was missed by the people who were telling you to get out of stocks or to prioritize money market funds over, you know, uh, long-term investing, what they missed was the unbelievable earnings power at the 500 best companies in the world, which comprise uh, the, the S&P names. And that continues. We're seeing some of the best earnings growth that we've seen in years right now. There was no uh, mean reversion in profit margins, which had also been long prophesied by the bears. And they didn't run out of levers to pull. They laid people off when they were overstaffed. They raised prices on customers. We can complain about that, but it's what they did. Um, when they couldn't do that, they found other ways to bring in new customers. And whatever this concoction was of levers that they had pulled, they kept profit margins high. And even with mediocre revenue growth, they found ways to grow the bottom line. And in the end, the most important factor for stocks, what are earnings going to do? And they continued to surprise the upside. And that is why we're here not because of Jay Powell, not because of anything else. These companies are incredibly profitable. One of the reasons you're here, I guess, Stephanie Link, is because from the April lows, and that's the close. So that was a little clip from downtown Josh Brown over at CNBC. And I just thought it was interesting because he brings up the point of why is the market doing so good in a rate, uh, a high interest rate environment, right? And the reason is, is because all these companies, they had a lot of overhead. They had a lot of bloat. They had a lot that they could cut back on, a lot that they could trim in, uh, in their businesses, which raised their profitability. So that raised their earnings per share. Now, I have below, I have three businesses that I believe are exemplifying this, um, this, this uh, reality. And of course, we're going to start with Amazon. So Amazon is this wonderful business that is growing net sales. They're growing at 11% now. So let me just mark it up for you right here. Right here, you can see we're growing at 11%. And then for 2025 to 2026, we're going to grow again at 11%. This is the top line. This is revenue we're talking about. So when you have interest rates at 5%, why would I stick in a, in a guaranteed 5% when I have a great business that's growing revenue at 11%? We didn't even talk about the EPS and uh, the net income. But here we go down even lower, and we're going to look at the net income, right? This is what we like to focus on when we're looking at our businesses and businesses that are in our reach fund, which is 13 businesses that we love in this market. So here we have the net income. We're going from 48 billion in 2024 to 62 in 2025. Okay, so that's a 28% growth that we're gonna have in net income. That's the money that you see at the bottom line. That's the money that comes to us. That's the money that really moves the stock. Okay, and then we look even further. We have here, we have 2025 jumping to 2026. We're gonna grow from 62 to that $80 billion in net income. This is money for you and me. That's a 29% growth. So again, why would you be in a 5% uh, you know, bond or 5% money market fund when you have a business like Amazon? So this is why Amazon stock is trading at all-time highs right now. And it's, to me, it looks like it's ready to break out. It's ready to go even higher. Um, with, with, again, with the revenue growing at 11%. So this is why, you know, Josh, Josh Brown is saying, why, why is the stock market at all time highs when, when you have uh, yields, you know, at 5% so high? This is why. It's because these businesses are great. There's a lot of businesses like this. So another business here, we have APP. This is App Lovin. App like, like on your phone, an app, right? So App Lovin, much smaller business than Amazon, but growing just as well. So here we have under net sales, 2024, we're growing from 4.3 to 4.8. That's an 11% growth 
just like Amazon. Then we're going from 4.8 billion to 5.4 in 2026. These are projections. That's a 10% growth that you're going to have in a uh, top line, the revenue at app Lovin. Okay. But what does that mean for you and me? We got to focus on net income. That's what we look at. So for net income, we're going to go from a billion in 2024 to 1.3 billion. Sorry. There you can see it now in 2025. That's a 27% growth in net income. All right. And here we go from 2025, 1.3 to 1.6. That's a 26% growth. We're expecting in net income from 25 to 26. So again, this is a great business that's growing really fast. Now, why are these businesses growing? Same with Amazon. There's a lot that's going on when it comes to AI. So app Lovin is making a lot of money doing AI generative, um, uh, their, their platform is focused on AI generation for, for advertisers. So they work with advertisers, online advertisers to help them figure out better ways to target their, their ads to potential customers. So, and they're using a lot of AI to do this. That's what I've been hearing in the earnings call. Third business, last one, then we're done. Fi, F I, this is Pfizer, not the one that you know, with the pokey, but this is Pfizer. This is a financial business. So net sales, let's look at that. 2024, we're supposed to do 19 billion going to 21 billion. That's an 8% growth. And then 25 to 26, we're going from 21 billion to 22 billion. That's another 8% growth. All right. Now let's look at the net income. We're going from 3.5 billion to 4.1. That's a 17% growth. So why would you be in that 5% money market fund when you have a business like Pfizer that's growing at uh, 17% for the bottom line? And again, you can see, like Josh Brown was saying, how uh, businesses are growing their top line. You know, they're doing okay, but the net income, what's coming down to you and me, the shareholders, is growing much more than the net sales, the sales, the revenue. And that's because they're trimming the fat, okay? They're, they're finding ways to become more efficient. They're finding ways to take out different parts of their businesses that aren't uh, monetized well. So that's how you get a business that's growing revenue at 8%, but somehow is able to grow their uh, net income at that 17%, okay? And then 2026, growing from 4.1 to 5 billion. That's a 21% growth from... 2025. So if this business does do this, that's a lot of money for you and me, the shareholders, that's going to come back in buybacks. It's going to come back in um, dividends, things like that. So now the, the point on buybacks, especially with this business, is that you can see net income is the actual number, the actual money that's coming in the business. But earnings per share is how much you're going to get as the shareholder, right? So when a company is doing big buybacks, a lot of buybacks, which this company Pfizer is doing those buybacks, something happens, a phenomena happens, which is that their net income may be go growing at 17%, 21%, but their earnings per share can grow at an even faster clip. Because when you look here at EPS, they're projected to grow EPS from 24, 6 zero eight per share to 7.3 per share. That's a 20% growth in EPS versus their 17% income net income growth. Now, if there were zero buybacks, this number would be the same. Okay. This percent growth would be the same, but because you're getting these buybacks, your piece of the pie is growing. Okay. This is why I'm so adamant on on buybacks. Buybacks are the steroids for your stock growth. Now, 2025 to 26, look at this. You're going from 7.3, you're going to go to 9.12 per share. That's a 25% growth in EPS versus the 21% uh, net income growth. So again, this is why the stock market is doing so well in a high rate environment. Businesses has, have found ways to become more profitable. Their revenues going up at a steady amount every year, but their net income and their EPS is going berserk. 
okay, because they took out the fat because they're in this higher rate environment. So bear markets make stronger businesses, which then fuel bull markets. That's what I got for you guys. If you want to hear more uh, of what I have to share, then make sure you like this video. Make sure you get subscribed. That'll help the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you get notified when I get new videos. Hit the bell. Um, stay healthy. Stay wealthy. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.